Hi everyone, welcome back to Yellow Cottage Soapery. Tonight I'm making a bath bomb making video and I will share my recipe that I use. I've used it for a long time. I will leave it in the description box below. I will also talk as I'm going through it and tell you exactly what amounts I'm adding of everything. I have pre-mixed some of my dry ingredients in here. Um, what I have in here is uh, Epsom salts. I have eight ounces of Epsom salts. Now, everything that goes into my Bath and Body products is researched so I know the benefits of what it does for you and your skin. And I don't add anything unnecessary and I don't add anything that isn't beneficial to the skin. So, Epsom salt is great for uh, relaxing your muscles and also loosening stiff joints. So, there's eight ounces of that already measured out in my bowl. I also have eight ounces of cornstarch in here. Now cornstarch is great for, you can also add it to your soap if you want to. It, what it does is it's a softening agent, so it will soften your water for you. Um, it also is great for healing if you have a sunburn um, or anything like that on your skin. So there's eight ounces of that, eight ounces of the Epsom salt, and the other thing in here is 16 ounces of baking soda. Now baking soda is wonderful. It serves as, um, let's see, it's an antifungal, it's an antiseptic, it's an antibacterial, and it's also a, an anti-inflammatory. Um, so that's the benefits of baking soda and there are 16 ounces of baking soda in here. So. Those are the three dry ingredients that I have. The first thing that I am doing after washing my hands and making sure my workspace, everything is clean, I actually don't wear gloves for this because I feel like I need to be able to feel the texture of it and know when it's ready to mold. So I'm going to go ahead and right now you can see I have chunks of Epsom salt and stuff like that in here. So I'm just going to, with my hands, I'm going to break it up, break up any pieces which is actually very fun to do. I like doing it. Now, the other dry ingredient that I have to add is citric acid. Now, citric acid is what makes your bath bomb um, fizzy and foamy and fun. And normally, people add it you know, in with their dry ingredients. But I wait and add it after I add my liquids. And then I mix it in, and the reason being is when you add your liquid, if the citric acid is already in the bowl, your liquids kind of activate that citric acid and make it bubble, and then you lose some of that that you would normally have in your bath. So I've decided that I would mix it after I've already mixed my liquids in with these dry ingredients. I would add it at that point. So right now I'm just making sure I don't have any clumps in here and just kind of blending this all together. I have my liquid ingredients already pre-mixed and I will leave um, that down below as well. For my liquid ingredients in this little bowl right here, I have added two tablespoons of coconut oil two tablespoons of shea butter, and one tablespoon of cocoa butter. What I do is I just measure it out in my little bowl, and then I go ahead and put it... Now, when you're doing teaspoons and tablespoons, it's obviously not as accurate as if you're weighing it in ounces or grams. So, I just make sure it's a level tablespoon, and I go ahead and put that little dish in the microwave, and I just zap it for like 20 seconds, stir it up real good, put it back in, you know, for another 15 seconds till it's melted. And a lot of times you can stand and stir it um, until it's completely melted. And the less time you have it in the microwave, the better, because your shea butter can get grainy and stuff like that. So all I mixed, I went ahead and mixed the, the oils in my bowl, melted them, and then I add four teaspoons of distilled water to that. And then I add four teaspoons of my fragrance. And it doesn't matter what fragrance you're using. If you are using this proportion of recipe, um, I find 
I, can, I don't vary with that because that is the amount of liquid I need for this recipe to work. So I add four teaspoons of my fragrance. Now if you're using essential oils, um, sometimes they can be a little bit stronger than fragrance oils, so you're going to have to check your usage rate for that, for what is skin safe. Um, and that should be all um, on the website of wherever you purchased the oil from. So now all of this is um, really blended up good. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding my liquid ingredients. Now when you do this, like I said, if you have your citric acid, if you just want to put it all in in the beginning, the 8 ounces of citric acid, then just add your liquid just a little bit at a time and just when you put it in just really you know put some of the dry ingredients over it so it doesn't completely um, activate your citric acid but since I don't have it in here I can just go ahead and add all of my liquid oil in here and blend this all up now it's going to feel really more wet um, than you know you need to be. It's going to be sticky in your hands. That's completely fine. You just want to get it all mixed up really good. Now the fragrance I'm using is Rainbow Sherbert and this uh, bath bomb I actually do in four different colors. I don't do la worry about layers or anything. I just kind of put them in the mold and they end up looking pretty just being you know the four different colors so this is all blended in really nice with the liquid it's just really crumbly and everything you at this point it might stick a little bit but it's not supposed to because you still have to add your colorant and your colorant the way the colorant that I use has liquid in it so that is what helps to get it and in, ready to form into a bath bomb so this is all mixed in, it smells great. Now I usually take my bowl and I just kind of do this just because there's always liquid on the bottom of it. It could be fragrance or awesome butters that you don't want to leave out. So I do that. Now I go ahead and I add my eight ounces of citric acid. And it's not going to activate it because the wet ingredients are already incorporated. So I just continue to blend everything with my hands. Now at this point you can also add, if you have bath bomb colorants that are in powder form, you can add that, and I, I, I don't, I've never really done that, so I'm not sure if you use witch hazel or what, but I'm just showing you what I do and what works for me, and it's pretty foolproof. So, all right, this is my stuff all combined. Now what I'm going to do is separate it off into colors. Oops. I'm just going to eyeball it, and I'm going to just put... some in each bowl now this mixture makes 11 bath bombs and then I have usually a half of one left and I usually mold it into um, some mold of some sort and I give it to my girls and that's what they use so I went ahead and did this and my colorants that I use are lab colors from Brambleberry this one is apricot and when you get these they're going to be in a little bottle and you have to dilute them with distilled water and she actually has it soap queen has a video that shows you how to dilute them you know the proportions of how you need to dilute them and i had these bottles so i just put them in these they're spray bottles and labeled them and they have lasted me for a really long time so i'm going to use this is one of the colors that i'm going to use and as you can see, I have a lot more in the bowl than I do in those, but that's fine. So I want my base color to be kind of orangey. So I'm just going to spray, oops, I'm going to spray, why isn't my nozzle working? Well, that's weird. 
Oh, it's not on there. Okay. Hold on for a minute. The little thing came off. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, now it's coming out. So I would say one, two, three, four, five. I would start with 10 if you had the entire thing in here and you're only doing one color. I would do 10, but because I only have about half of it in here, I just did five. And this is nowhere near being ready to, or ready to mold. So I'm gonna go ahead and do five more. Two, three, four, five. So if you go on brambleberry.com, you will see they have tons of colors, lab colors, and um, they work great because they have the liquid in them that you need to harden, you know, to make your bath bombs ready to form. There's one, two, three. I kind of keep track, usually for an entire batch, I do 18 to 20 sprays, and that works out perfectly. Okay, so this is getting, you can feel, that's why I don't wear gloves, because I need to feel it. You can see it's getting ready where I can, I can form this, and this will stay together. So, and you don't want to make it too wet and mushy, or your bath bombs will not stay together. And you don't want to make it not wet enough, or they will crack. So I'm going to leave, set this to the side, and I'm going to go ahead and add citrus green. Now I'm just going to do like three squirts. Don't tell me this one isn't going to work. One. I think that was like four. Now these bowls, these small bowls are kind of a pain to mix in, but... Now a lot of times my bath bombs are... Just did three more there. My bath bombs are um, one or two colors. I keep them very simple. They're all pale colors. I don't like um, really dark, bright bath bombs. Um, for one thing, they can stain your tub. Not always. It depends on what is being used. Now, see, this is still, when I go like this, it does stay together, but it's still a tiny bit crumbly. So I'm just going to do like one more. And set it to the side and do the next one. So yeah, I just do one or two colors. Um, I don't do the fancy bath bombs with the cool stuff inside. Um, I just don't have time. <laughs> I mean, it looks fun, but now this is yellow. It's it's lemon. I just did four there. I don't like these small bowls. And it's not easy to mix and also you're going to get some color along the sides so just make sure you're blended together you can see this is sticking together really well um, so I'm going to set that aside and then this is going to be bright cherry one two three four Now I asked on my Facebook page if anybody would be interested in me doing a bath bomb video because I did the one but it was a long time ago um, and I thought they everybody said yes 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 so I was like okay I'll make a bath bomb video because I was ma I'm making a ton of bath bombs tonight restocking every kind that I'm out of um, so this is good this this sticks it's a little bit loose it kind of crumbles so I'm gonna do one more. And then that should be good. And then I'm going to get ready to mold these. Now, when I mold them, I do the same thing I did in the previous or the last video I made. I use the clear ornament shell that I get at AC Moore. Um, I like them because if 
I just like the size of them. I love I love that they are um, they make like a four ounce bath bomb, which I think is perfect for a bath. Anything bigger just seems kind of a waste to me. Um, you don't want to make people's baths so slippery that they fall when they get out and then you get sued. So I go ahead and I'm I have these two pieces and they aren't necessarily what goes together. In other words, this may be a top and this may be a top. So it's not like the original, you know, husband and wife pair. This is like, I don't know, they're mixed up. But I do it because I don't like the lip on it that you get. I kind of break the lip off because it will crack anyway and you don't want that in your bath bomb. So I just do it. It doesn't have, I don't have to push it together. Um, I just, I mean, I have to push it together, but I don't have to clip it. You know, it doesn't have to seal all around. If you guys can see what I'm doing. It doesn't have to like, you know go together where it snaps or whatever you want to say. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add some of each color and I'll just do it over my bigger bowl. So if it drops down in it's no big deal because I don't do this um, you know to have perfect I'm going to actually add a little bit more Oh, maybe not. This will be fine. So then I just go ahead and I hold it for a second, push it together, and it always comes right apart. So you can see that one. And now sometimes if your cover thing here doesn't want to come off, then you're going to want to use a dowel or something to tap, a spoon or whatever, to tap on it to get it to come loose because if you try to pull it too hard it's going to break the two apart. So I always grab up a big blob like this and just push them together so you got a really compact bath bomb and then I just easily take one off, take the other off and there is and then I always put them in, all I have is some boxes, little boxes I got, I think at the craft store, I'll show you. Um, they're just these, they come with a lid. They're all, oh, my bath bombs are rolling around. Um, they're all different colors and patterns, but I transport my soap in them because they fit perfectly and I can actually use the lid and the bottom. So I always put just washcloths or towels in there that I have designated for that and then that's where they dry and I can package these tomorrow. So there's the bath bomb. And when you're doing it you kind of want to work, you don't have to work quickly, you just don't want to stop and go fold laundry or something because this will continue to firm up, your oils will get a little thicker in there and then it will be hard for them to stick together. So this recipe like I said makes 11. It's a weird number. I've never changed it or done anything because I feel like that's a good amount to make before it starts to get harder on me. So I think that's a great size bath bomb. It's got great oils in it and it'll make your you know your tub your water really soft and but it's not overkill some of the huge bath bombs I'm like why because it's not like you can use them several times I guess maybe you could but break them apart I don't know but I I guess that's me the frugal part not so much frugal I just don't like to be wasteful I guess so I have found that this and you can use the ornament you know and you can snap them together if you want that's perfectly fine too I have just found that doing it this way with the with the two end pieces works great for me but you'll kind of get a feel for it the more you make them at first I, w I didn't l really like making them I was like oh I'm gonna make bath bombs but now I really love it and when I make them I restock, I wait and I pretty much restock all of all of the ones I make at once. So it's like getting the mess out one time. 
and restocking all of them. Yeah, it's pretty messy. I make a pretty big mess when I'm doing it. But like I said, you always, you want to fill each half pretty tightly. You want to smush them in there and then you want to grab a big blob, a big blob of it and just push them together. You don't have to squeeze too hard. Um, if you feel more comfortable to buy several of these and leave them right in this mold overnight and then in the morning just use a spoon and tap it and gently pull the things off, you can do that as well. Um, I know there's probably, I'm sure there's a million recipes online or uh, videos on bath bombs. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things you just got, you've got to play with it and figure out what works for you and then use the bath bomb and find out, you know, what you like or what you don't like and change it up from there. But this is a great recipe. Um, it's the one I've used from the beginning. Um, it has my favorite butters in it. And they definitely fizz a lot more since I add the citric acid. Whoa. What's fell? Since I add the citric acid after I add my liquid. So I didn't count exactly the number of sprays. I'm going to go ahead and just add my colors in here just to make these last couple. But generally it is like 18 to 20 spritz, spritzes of of the colorant. Look at this mess everywhere. Mess. Okay, so now we're going to just go ahead and try not to mush these colors together too much. But I am doing, um, at one of the retail locations on Thursday night, I know most of you aren't from the area, but I'm doing, um, I'm giving away samples, soap samples, and I'm going to be there for a few hours that night. So I'm trying to stock my bath bombs because I was there last night and there was four, four left and I just stocked them last week. So, but if you're local, you should come and see me. This one needs to be filled a little bit more and see if you, if you feel like it's a little off, you can fill it more and just redo it. And once you get down to not having a whole lot in your bowl, it is more difficult to All right, what do I have? All right. I might be able to make another one and I might not. I'm just going to see. use the rest and I can sometimes put it in a flower mold sometimes just um, Mackenzie likes it like just left as a powder actually to put in the bath but I'm gonna go ahead and just stick this in this one 
and that'll give them a half of one. I have a little container in their bathroom. I guess you could say they were the misfit bath bombs. So that is that is it. I let them dry for about 24 hours and then I have another video. If I remember I will leave the link below to how I package them. Um, see like this one? There it just popped out. So I'll just have a half like that for the girls to use. And I hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below, and I'll do my best to answer you. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.